Welcome back, San Diego. Here we are again with my trusted videographer at Alberto Visuals. For those of you who are following any of the work that I do on Instagram, he is my trusted videographer. I cannot do what I do without him, along with a few other individuals in this world that we call real estate. And today I am honored and so grateful to be able to have a great discussion with one of uh, my wonderful service providers. As you know, in real estate, um, there are very crucial components that are needed to ensure a successful transaction when purchasing or even selling your home. And one of those crucial components is escrow. And that is the one word that any real estate agent loves to hear. We are going to escrow. So today uh, on this episode of under contract, and yes, under contract in the literal sense, whether that's real estate or any other contract that you've made with yourself, we are speaking real estate. So more importantly, escrow. And I am honored to have Jennifer Flannery with me from River Escrow today. She has taken the time literally on the fly in her busy schedule to take time out with us today and speak everything escrow. And Jennifer, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you, my dear? So glad to meet you virtually after all of the emails that we go through back and forth and text messages and the stuff that we do in between. And I have to tell you, one of the things that I love about what we do in real estate, and that was my dog, by the way, we'll keep that in there, <laughs> um, is you develop friendships, right, with your service providers. And I'm a relationship person. And as you know, real estate is a relationship business. So for me, when I come across other individuals that I strike up really cool friendships with, all through emails and phone calls and text messaging. It's cool to put a face with a voice. It's cool to put a face with that person behind the veil, if you will. So I feel like you and I will be friends for a minute for sure, because you just seem so fun. Plus you have on a cool shade of yellow today. <laughs> I love bright colors. Yeah. I, I love to feel bright yeah. and airy yeah. and sunny yeah. and full of light. But Tammy, I agree with you 100% that this whole process, the real estate world, the transaction from start to finish is the rapport you have with every team member during the transaction, from the agent to the lender, to the termite, to absolutely everyone. So rapport and communication is... Um, is a, is, a, is a gift I feel that I have. I love to over communicate. I love to build rapport. As you well know, we, we met on an escrow transaction. You were on the buying side and it's an honor to be here today and um, talk with you and virtually meet you as well. So this is exciting and I couldn't agree more about the rapport and the relationship part of this. It's one of the most important decisions that people make is purchasing a home, one of three, medical, you know, so this is a huge process in somebody's life. And you know, what's interesting about that, because I had this conversation yesterday um, with my boyfriend who happens to be an attorney, and I was listening to him speak with one of his clients. And it was a very difficult case for him to overcome because the uh, client was in jail and they had to strike a deal with the other side. And I remember hearing him talking with the other side and negotiating to get it to where they could resolve it, even though they're on opposing sides, but he managed to make it work in favor of his client because he worked with the other side. And real estate is just like that, right? As agents, we have to know and we have to agree, hey, listen, though you might represent the seller and I represent the buyer, we want this to be done for our clients. We want to get the deal done. We have their best interest in mind. We have a fiduciary responsibility to them. So we need to get it done. And yes, the rapport is huge because that goes way beyond the transaction. Because you know as well as I do, I will see you again, Mrs. Agent or Mr. Agent in another deal. I might be on the list side at that point, right? So you can't burn those bridges. You have to have that rapport and you have to have that, that, that transparency and that authenticity to say, hey, dude, though you represent the other person, we are working together. We're not against one another. And, and having an escrow team 
and the, the, the deal that we did with you was flawless. And that is so important, which is why you are my go-to now going forward, because you guys got the shit done. And you got it done timely. And there were just, it was seamless. It was like, oh my God, is this really one of the easiest transactions I've done in a while in the middle of all the crazy nonsense we're doing? So talk to me a little bit about A, the importance of, yes, having a team behind you, such as a solid team of escrow officers. And granted, they're all very good in their own ways and their own minds, right? But you guys somehow knocked it out of the park. And I was just like, whoa, did we really just get that done the way that we did? And we did. Yeah. And I appreciate your kind words because it means so much to myself and my team. I think what's really, really important about understanding the process and being such a solid team is we understand the agent. We understand what you're doing to bring this escrow into provision. We understand your farming. We understand your cold calling. We understand when you pick up that phone to call someone, you have 10 seconds to make it right. You have 10 seconds to keep them interested, engaging with them. You have to mirror and match with your clients, their tenacity, what's going on. So we know how difficult it is for buying and selling agents, especially in this market. I mean, pricing is more important now than it has been in three years. I mean, talking people through the process a lot of people feel self-educated. Um, so yes, we understand how much work and effort, patience, um, kindness, it goes in to getting something into escrow. Right. So when it comes to us, we need to be on it. We need to take those calls. You will call my office. You won't get a receptionist. You'll either get myself or my officer or the assistant. We don't, um, all of us pick up the phone. All of us are on the email chain. We let you know as soon as the EMD is on, if you want to go through a text, if you want to go on a program that we have client bridge, where you can download it on your phone. It's um, compatible with iPhones and Androids. So you can put everybody on the same system. So when your clients, buyer and seller get something, we can text you, them, or we can simply send you a link that channels everything that's come in. So they're always in the know. I personally do calls on Friday. Every Friday, I like to educate and update all of my transactions. Even as like, it's okay. You know what, your client had a stressful week this week, but we took care of it, everything's fine. Even if it's as simple as that. But I do believe that it brings some sort of comfort to your clients in the, in the process that they are in the now. They know what is going. They don't have to call. They don't have to call you, Tammy. They don't have to call the buying agent when it comes to the part of escrow, unless they want to ask you a uh, color choice or right. what they feel they should do in the house. But as far as the transaction goes, we honestly 100% feel by the time it gets to escrow, we need to be there as a support system to everybody in the transaction. You met, you made mention of something that's so important, and, and that is the responsiveness, right? I cannot tell you, and I will speak from my experience with the transaction that we did together. My client was over the moon with the responsiveness and the timeliness of information being delivered. And as you know, when there's a first-time home buyer, they freak the F out not knowing what's going to happen from point A to point Z. So that communication and the responsiveness is so valuable, not just in general, but to a first time home buyer who is green, who is relying on the information that we are giving them, whether it's the real estate agent or the escrow officer, or if it's the lender, whoever it might be, they need to know in a sense that you're holding my hand through this journey and that you are going to explain to me the importance of getting the EMD in in 72 hours. Why do I have to have that in? And how do I have that in? Even if it's outlined on the offer, you still have to reiterate that, okay, now you have 72 hours from acceptance to get that EMD in. And what does that look like? One of three things, right? So the responsiveness Annie. that you provided for my client at that time, and I can imagine that goes forward with any client that you work with is huge. That is huge because that's how I operate. Yes, you're absolutely correct, Tammy. One thing also, as you say, your boyfriend's an attorney. 
we don't understand documents of legal, how would we know? How do these buyer and sellers know? They don't. It's like being in a legal process. Sometimes people get their opening packages and they're saying, why do I have to sign this grant deed? I haven't sold my house yet. What's going on? You know, I don't understand. Why is this happening? Or why do I have to give an authorization form for my HOA fees? Why? I mean, I'm selling my house. There's so many things that they just don't understand. Completely not. I mean, why? How, how would they? So with that being said, with first time home um, owners and even even people that are have been in escrow transactions before, we always ask our clients, would you like us to go out and sit with your clients for the opening package? That way they can have a notary at their home, you know, and, and talk about what they need. They don't under necessarily even understanding, um, you know, the earnest money deposit form, the HOA, the, you know, I don't want to put my credit card down on this piece of paper. So it makes them more comfortable sometimes if you go out and, and that's, a, that's the service we do offer. That's how comfortable we want them to feel. We can come to your house and sit with you and talk to you and explain this, you know? So that's, that's, um, it's like a family. We might not see them for a long time, but you know, it's possible we will. So it's always good, and it goes as it goes back to the you know rapport and the relationship the relationships you build with people along the way. You know, it's funny again. You you brought to mind, and you keep hearing my little Chihuahua nipping in the background. That's Evie, and she thinks she's a pit bull. Evie, she, she wants to, to say. she wants to be part of this. And, and the cool thing about my podcast is it's so organic that some of the shit will stay in this. <laughs> Because we keep it real, right? Um, as well as it should. As well as it <laughs> should. Life. And you know, it's interesting on that point, I'll go off on a tangent. You know, it's funny because when I first started real estate, I remember I was, um, oh, and now we got the street sweepers coming. That's even better. I was uh, showing homes in the middle of a storm, I remember, out in Temecula, and I rolled up in, uh, I think, joggers and flip-flops and, you know, whatever, uh, during a storm. And it was a first-time home buyer, and she looked at me, and she goes, oh, uh, this is not what you look like on your social media. I go, you're not buying what I look like on social media, girl. You're working with me because of the shit I'm going to get done for you. Right? right. So th with that comes, we keep it real. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many things in real estate that are so fluid and there's so many targets moving and whatnot. You have to keep it real. You have to be uber transparent with your clients, not just during the escrow process, but out the gate so that there are no punches pulled, so that there aren't any feelings of, oh my gosh, I was blindsided by this. Like you, I over communicate to a fault. Like, I don't want anybody coming back saying, well, you didn't tell me X, Y, and Z. Oh, yes, we did. Right, I, yeah. I sent you an email and you read it because I got a tracker that says you read it. So we are all good. But that is so important in this particular part of it. So talk to me a little bit about something that I just experienced. And for the person out there listening, it will help them understand, you know, the importance of once we open escrow and we have a full PR done, Okay. Things pop up on that report. And I just went through this with one of my escrows that may either delay significantly the close of escrow or even might cancel the escrow. And in this particular situation, the buyer, well, she, I represent the seller and the buyer during the transaction. The, the, the seller's uh, wife passed away recently and the wife that passed away handled all of the bills, including the house. She knew she needed to sell the home because she wanted to move on and start a new life. Great. Good for you, which she should have. During escrow, in that PR, 14 liens popped up, right? Not easy liens, IRS liens, solar liens, you name it, under the sun, every lien. And escrow had to work through. We, we extended escrow by two weeks to get this done. She would have never known, the seller would have never known any of this stuff was attached to that home had she not put the home on the market. So talk to me a little bit about, suffice it to say we cleared and we closed. Talk to me a little bit about some of the items that could pop up during escrow in that preliminary report for title that could really jeopardize the transaction and how quickly do you as, an, as, you know, as the escrow officer 
How do you navigate through that? How do you get it done where the lay person couldn't get that done? Because I have another one that's coming soon that we're going to list. And I already know about three items that have popped up that we're clearing right now so that we can list. Correct. Well, that's what makes you professional. You know, um, getting the prelim beforehand and working through some of the process and getting it started is a huge help. And thank you, Tammy, for actually, you know, being so professional and taking those extra steps because it does help when you get into escrow. It helps your title team. It helps your lender. So um, that's always appreciated when the agent um, takes extra step while she knows, you know, or he knows. So if you know your clients are going through challenges, yeah, it's best to start digging out and, and figuring things out. One, one step at a time. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's very overwhelming when there's multiple situations on a prelim. And that's another reason we feel so blessed in what we do. We've been doing it for 25 years. We have such great relationships with every title company. And again, going back to rapport and relationships, the title team and the escrow team, they need to work together. They know that, we know that um, liens, child support liens get on there. But at the end of the day, it could definitely take a little more time, but in the process of we seem to get it done working together. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of calls, but it gets done. You can't prevent any of that. You know, 80, 90% of clients know, or they know their skeletons in their closets, if you will. They, they might know they owe some child support, you know, so, you know, not being rude or disrespectful, but sometimes, you know, want to say what's going on in their lives understandably so but it does come up so the key to prevent those things is take the listing know your client let us know hey what this is what's going on and get a pre-escrow started okay i suggest a pre-escrow for every escrow right now so let me ask you this i have this listing it's in carmel valley and three items popped up we're getting it cleaned up right. And, and they're relatively simple, you know, an HOA lien, um, a judgment on a credit card, it's easy to pay off, and a, um, d- a grant deed that needs to be paid. Okay. So three relatively simple items, and we're working on it now. Would you suggest that I hand that over to you and go, hey, girls, this is a new escrow we're, g- we're going to have. Let's get the pre-escrow started so that we can get ahead of the game. Perfect. So any agent out there, That's listening. And I know there's a ton of you out there that have these listings that won't work on it, by the way, Jennifer, because there is a lot of work to overcome. So they won't take a listing because there's a lot of stuff attached to the home in that prelim if they're doing their due diligence and doing the prelim before it even goes to market, right? That are foregoing listings because they're like, oh my God, it's just too much work. In other words, they want a gimme. They want an easy one that's, you know, ready to go and no issues. Guess what? Give me those deals. Right. Because with that, you learn with that, you become a better agent with that. You, you establish even solid relationships with your escrow team, with the client. And out of that will come a ton of referrals because you went the extra distance. Because I can tell you right now, in this particular case, the husband came to me and said, my wife knows nothing about this and I need to get it cleaned up before we list it. And I go, I can't tell you what to do, sir. But what I can tell you is here's the report. Here are the items you need to handle. Please get it cleaned up. We'll go, we'll go to market once that's clean. Right. And lo and behold, he's working on it right now and we'll probably go live next week. Right. So for those agents who have this same situation or similar, talk with your, talk with your escrow team, know your clients, talk with your escrow team and say, here's the deal. Start pre-escrow. Correct. Clean it up before we even get to that point. Okay, good. Absolutely. So tell me, tell me a little bit about in this market, it's been shit crazy for everyone. Right. I mean, I know you guys were busy before the pandemic. I was super slammed before the pandemic. I was even busier now. I I haven't skipped a beat as, as well as most of us have not. Tell me what you feel the differences are between the, over the last three years that we've gone through this debacle. Prior to that, 
we, how you see the market differently now versus then and t- from the escrow perspective in terms of, is it more challenging now to get things done or because you guys are so darn good and on top of your shit, things are so streamlined that you really don't see that much of a difference with the difficulty level. You know, talk to me a little bit about the differences in the market then versus now. Um, actually, it, then with... Mo- <sighs> That's a great, I'm trying to do it from the escrow perspective. Um, I work so close with my agents. I, I do know what you guys are going through. I mean, right now it's almost like sell me this pin mode. You know, I mean, I get it. Uh, but as far as the escrow part, it's really honestly not complicated. It's, it, it doesn't have, it's not complicated. It's, it's really not stressful. Yeah, we're busy and we are talking, you know, a lot of people off the ledge a little bit, but other than that, um, it's pretty solid. You know, it, it's just, it just is. I, and that's the best answer I can give you on that. It's our job and we know what we're doing. So it's a process that we have down like a science so it, it's just, it's just great to be busy and it's just great to work with so many fantastic agents and lenders. You know, I mean, we just went through that whole refi crazy on top of purchases. So, you know, you just take what's good, but with what you said, Tammy, I, I really appreciate that statement about taking the hard ones because you can really enjoy the good ones. You know, without those hard ones, you know, it's not as fun. And I know that might sound a little off, but you know, the hard ones, you feel great that you're able to get the challenge done. You made two ha- families very happy. And um, so I, I don't, we don't mind the hard ones. Bring it to us. We'll right. take care of it. You right. Know, it, makes, it, makes, it makes it better. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, anytime that you, you have a challenge, I feel like in a transaction, it's so much easier to just wing it and, and learn. And if you don't have the answers, ask. Right. I mean, there's so many things that you learn during a difficult transaction that you're just like, it makes you a better agent. It makes you so much more knowledgeable and powerful in your profession. Right. Um, I I have to tell you, you guys were so much fun to work with and just so kind and so thoughtful and so on top of your shit that I was just like, dude, I've worked with some other escrows before that were good, but you guys were flawless, flawless. And I'm so honored and so happy to know that you Will we, we will be partnering going forward because I've got a ton of business that are just in the pipeline waiting that I'm doing my due diligence on until, you know, until it's time, which now I know I can just present them to you and we can just do a pre-escrow opening, right? So Absolutely. that to me is golden. And that's just your best option. You yeah. know, send it to us. We get the title. We get everything going. Yep. We start doing our stuff. So it, it, it continues to stay flawless. Does that and apply to it, land as well? Pardon? Does that apply to land as well? No, <laughs> well, honestly, because I've got a lot that I'm that I'm listing up in Lake Arrowhead. Same thing? No, we could do we absolutely we perfect. Could, okay. Same with land, lots of land. I'm perfect. sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you correct. But yep. you know, the point is, um, yes, you're doing it right. Talk to us if you don't. Even if it's not my deal right now, I will answer it. I'm known for that. I've gotten deals because of that. I will take your call. Perfect. Knowledge yeah. is key. Isn't that right? That's the, that's the famous saying, but honestly, it truly is. And yeah. And, and you do such a good job is. of saying top of mind. You really do. And I appreciate that. And you know, if there were two tips you could give the, the home, the, the seller or buyer in this market, what would it be to ensure that once we open escrow, it goes smoothly? Two tips. My two tips um, for opening escrow It's just, please make sure you honestly sign everything. We get so many things sent to us and it's not signed. So we actually can't even process it. Then it gets sent back. So that takes time. You want to save as much time once it goes into FRO. You want a solid closing date. You want to keep that date. Two is just respond. You know, um, I know some agents get irritated that we ask a lot about wiring instructions and if the email is correct. Well, we do that because the wire fraud is so insane. It's not like we don't know your email or your client's email, but when we're sending a wire or your clients are sending us a wire, it's just crucial that we communicate, communicate before you send the wire. 
Um, it happens all the time. It's not preventable unless you have this solid response. We're sending you, not to not to over even communicate on that because I, like you, over communicator. However, but when we're saying, hey, this is what's happening, you need to look for this email. Um, we get a lot. I've sent you my email and then we explain why. So that is the key. So for whoever's listening out there, honestly, wire fraud is not that scary. It sounds more scary than it is. It's it's not just stay on top of your emails. And and it's usually it doesn't it doesn't happen, but it does. So just know that. that so would communication. Be my obviously the communication is key. I mean that's that's communicate, communicate, communicate. And when we ask you to do something, obviously there's a reason. And time is. is of the essence. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was real estate 101 when I became an agent. Time is of the essence. And that is so true across the board. Well Jennifer, I have to tell you, I have loved every moment of this. I feel like I could chat with you forever because there's so much to learn. You are so insightful, so knowledgeable and so darn professional and I cannot wait for more business that there's so much on the horizon right now with me and with moving on the series that I'm going to make sure that you are all very much busy <laughs> busier yes, than you already are it. yes I appreciate all your yes. kind words so thank and you I love, I love your energy girl you, oh, you just keep doing what you're doing <laughs> I try to keep it real because there's no fucking way I could do it any other way and you yeah. know what I'm proud of myself right now because yeah. usually I start the podcast with the f-bomb and this yeah. time I ended it with it <laughs> so having said that say hello to everyone on your team. I'm I grateful for you. I will be sending you an email on two that are coming soon next week to get that pre-escrow started. And Jennifer, have a blessed day today. You look fabulous in yellow. I hope to see you during my birthday celebration. Would love, love, love to see you in person. Have a blessed day today. Thank you for taking the time for all of your escrow needs, all of my people out there in real estate land. Check her out, Jennifer Flannery, River Escrow, the best, hands down, professional, gets the shit done on time, if not sooner than later. Check her out. We love you. Have a fantastic day. San Diego, stay classy. Stay classy.